Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Our gracious Father, we thank you very much for this occasion and this opportunity to be alive, to witness the 10th anniversary of Deeper Life High School. Well, thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and that you are still doing in this school and in the life of the students, the staff, and even the parents. We pray, dear Lord, as we celebrate at this time, that, Lord, a celebration will bring glory to your name in Jesus' name. And Lord, we're not going to celebrate without you because all that has been done is all by your grace. And so we return all the glory to you in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know you have answered and you are going to bless every one of us at this session in Jesus' name. Thank you because it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm looking at the mandate from God on Deeper Life High School through the man of God. That's our general superintendent. When you, look about, when you talk about education, education could be seen as the best legacy. Parents can bequeath their children. It is what one learns from birth till death. Education breathes life into a child. And a child that is given education, especially with a Christian background like yours, has been given what he or she needs to make it in life. No wonder that the Lord gave a general superintendent the vision to establish the life high school. It is a great thing that we all give thanks unto God who makes everything beautiful in his own time. What else can we say but to glorify God for the growth and the progress and the high standard holistically that Deeper Life High School has attained within just a decade of its existence. Looking back at the present crop of students in the school and those who have graduated, one cannot but say that you are coming out as a new breed of educated minds who will rewrite the history of our nation and rebuild a collective societal identity towards creating a better future for all. This is a challenge for you. And I pray that God will surely see you through in the new world so that the vision of our Father in the Lord as given by the Almighty God will not be derailed. I would like to draw your attention in achieving this goal as I give you a brief of some of the challenges that confronted us as pioneering National Education Committee of Deeper Life High School. I believe that there are one or two things that you will learn as students or even as staff of this great institution as we look at our theme, 10 times better, at 10, let us get something inspirational from the life of Daniel and his friends. It was at a meeting in Lagos involving the state overseers and some key leaders in Lagos. A general superintendent shared the vision of starting a secondary school by the church in all the states of the Federation and Lagos and this was to take off by the following year, 2010. A short while later, the National Education Committee was formed. And I was asked to be the chairman of the 12 men committee. There are seven stages or experiences that we went through that I want to quickly share with us as we face challenges in life. Number one, predetermined purpose before the challenge. 
predetermined purpose before the challenge. I want to look at the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 1. And I want to read from verses 6 through to 8. Daniel chapter 1 from verse 6. Now among this now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Listen. Eden nations not only ate unclean beasts, which were forbidden by the Jewish laws. We see that in Leviticus chapter 11, verses 45 through to 47. But even the clean animals that were eaten were first offered as victims to their gods. And part of the wine was poured out as a libation on their altars. Daniel therefore resolved not to defile himself with their food or with their dainties. There is something we need to note here. Daniel took the decision not to defile himself with this meat right from the moment he was admitted into this prestigious institution. You know, there are people that take, that try to take such decisions when the problem arrives. At the time, they were confronted with the challenge. That's when they try to say, I will not, I will not. But as soon as you enter the Palai High School, within your first term, make up your mind what you will make out of the institution. You want to finish up in the sciences, purpose it in your heart. You want to have an all-round excellent result in school set, purpose it in your mind. And at the beginning, and walk towards it. Make up your mind from the beginning. This is my goal. This is where I'm going. And walk towards that goal. And the Lord will help you. We see the same thing played out in the life of Ruth. In Ruth chapter 1, we read about Naomi. Who did all she could to discourage Ruth from following her. But Ruth had decided. Even before Naomi began to talk, Ruth had made up her mind that she was going. It wasn't uh, the exhortation on whether you will have children, you have a husband, or you will not have a husband. That was the issue. As far as Ruth was concerned, that was not the issue. She had already settled all that in her mind before they took off the journey. Opa, on the other hand, was not sure. Yes, she wanted to follow, but yes, she was not sure. On the way, when she was confronted with the challenges ahead, she drew back. You will not draw back. And so, we see in verse um, 15, and she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people, and unto her gods, return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. But whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking 
unto her. Fortunately, a few years before this time, I have purposed in my heart that whatever God will ask me to do through my leader, Pastor W.F. Kumui, that it will be done. Whatever the challenges may be, because I believed in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And I believe you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. And that was very useful at this instance. We see in number two, the place of faith in confronting the challenge. The place of faith in confronting the challenge. In Daniel chapter 1, we read from verse 10. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who has appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your salt? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzer, who the prince of the eunuch had said over Daniel, Ananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pause to eat and water to drink. Daniel approached the challenge with faith. And he told the man, he said, just give us a short time. And you will see that rather than getting leaner or uh, weaker, we'll become stronger and become wiser and we'll become better. He had confidence in God that God can do all things. Have confidence in God. The God we are serving is a faithful God. It's God that can never fail. It's God that will never let you down. Even as a young student, the Lord will be faithful to you if you are faithful to the Lord. In whatever we do, I must need to say this to you. The faith in God is very vital. If it is going to be pleasing to God, and if it will receive divine favor and support, then it must be by faith. Daniel knew that. And so Daniel confronted the challenge with faith. And Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 tells us, For without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So Daniel believed that God was going to see them through. The same thing, the assignment that was given to us concerning the Palaver School was a daunting one. But God was there for us. Praise the Lord. Number three, divine favor and help in the challenge. In St. John's Gospel, chapter 15, let's look at St. John's Gospel, chapter 15. And I want to look at the second part of verse 5 there, John chapter 15, the second part of verse 5. It says, let me read the old verse. I'm the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Now listen to this. For without me, you can do nothing. We can do nothing. And so the assignment was uh, challenging. But the Lord helped us, like I said. I remember a particular weekend. We were to meet and give an update report to our father in the Lord, our general superintendent, after the service on Sunday. But at that meeting, as we consider the report of the subcommittee on infrastructure, among others, almost everybody in the committee concluded that there was no way any of the schools could take off by even the end of 2010. Every attempt to move forward was not possible 
as the committee members, one after the other, speak to prove that I should go to explain to the general superintendent that 2010 was not feasible and that we need more time. To this, I personally decline that except we all go together to see the general superintendent as a team, I will not go. They also refused, saying, I'm the chairman, and so I'm the one to go to see the general superintendent. And so I also refused. And this continued till very late in the morning, around 2 a.m. Then the Lord, by spirit, ministered to me to round off the meeting, since we're not making any headway. And then we closed the meeting. Everybody went to take a little rest before the Sunday service. That early in the morning, I kept asking God, what am I to tell the general superintendent after the service? And I got no definite answer. So we went for the service. I remember it was during the message the pastor was preaching on something like uh, the true unity in the body. And when he got to point two, he was talking about the fellowship when suddenly he went off to ask a question that how can we have fellowship if I ask you to do something and you don't do it and you are saying it is not possible. I was dazed where I sat down. How could God find us out like this? I remember immediately after the service that day, Pastor Jerry Asimota and uh, late Pastor Bangboye, they came to meet me asking what are we to do. I told them, I don't know, but they should just pray for me as I want to go to see the GS. I'm sure, if not that, we closed the meeting very late, around 2 a.m. The committee members would have thought I went to report them to the general superintendent. But that incident turned the whole committee around and it sparked faith in us. And we moved on steadily as a team thereafter. Number four, progress through united body. I go back to the book of Daniel. Progress through united body. In the book of Daniel chapter one, I read from verse uh, 11. Then said Daniel, to Meza, whom the prince of the eunuch had set over Daniel, Ananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pause to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that ate of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. One thing I want to draw your attention to here is this. There is Daniel and his three friends. They were united. If you notice, they say, prove thy servants. They said, we they were all speaking with one united voice. That was what gave strength to their request. And it was not that, uh, well, it's Daniel's opinion, no? it's Daniel's idea. And so uh, the others are hiding behind. No, they were all unitedly. They believed in God and they came out as a, one, as a body. And they took that decision together and they said, prove us. And you're going to discover that we will be better. 
And that we're not going to let you down. We're not going to embarrass you. Because we know the God that we serve. And they spoke so convincingly and so unitedly that the prince of the eunuch had no option than to agree with them. Now, we also see that the message we received that Sunday, plus the general superintendent's counsel and instructions, helped to bring the team back on course. And with a united force, press on to lay the foundation of the Deeper Life High School that we're witnessing today. The Lord will walk with any group of people once you are united and you're walking by faith. Our God is a faithful God. He had never failed. He will never fail. I look at Point number five, purposeful prayer and effective planning to overcome the challenge. Purposeful prayer and effective planning to overcome the challenge. In the case of Daniel and his friends, at this particular time, we were not given the details of how they did, how they prayed, but obviously, seeing from the way they did, they faced challenges in other places, you know, they must have unitedly gone to God in prayer. And they must have prayed fervently and earnestly so that what they are desiring from God will be granted unto them. You don't take God for granted. You will pray. Let's look at Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, and I want to read from verse 16. This is another um, different occasion after that first experience. Verse 16, then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. You know the story here. The king Nebuchadnezzar had had a dream and he had forgotten the dream. And he called the magicians and the astrologers and all the people that they have been training. And they told them, this is my situation. I had a dream. But the dream had gone away from me. And I need that dream. And I need the interpretation. The magicians told him, nobody has such thing from any human being. That you tell us the dream and we know how to get the answer. You tell us the dream you had and we will know how to solve the problem. But Nebuchadnezzar said, I have forgotten. Then there is like, Nebuchadnezzar, we cannot help you. And the man got angry. And he said, what's the use feeding you, taking care of you? If you don't solve this problem, then count yourself, all of you, as dead. And of course, Nebuchadnezzar was the king. And whatever he says carries weight. So the people were scared. But they could not solve the problem. Eventually, one of the servants to the king came to meet Daniel and his friends and told them, that this is the decree that the king has said that he was going to slay all the magicians and the astrologers, including Daniel and his friends, and that he wants the answer now, now, now. Then Daniel told the servant, go back and tell the king that there's no problem. Why is the king in a hurry? Give us a little time and we'll be able to give the king the dream and the interpretation because we believe in God and that God himself will grant us. And in verse 16 of that Daniel chapter 2, we saw that Daniel went in and desired of the king that he will give them time 
and that he would show the king the interpretation. And then the king said, okay, I agree. And that night, look at verse 17. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercy of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then, praise the Lord. Verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the season. He removeth kings and set up all kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. And so he went before the king. And then he was able to give the interpretation of the dream to the king. Now what we are saying is this. That there should be a purposeful prayer. An effective planning if we are to overcome the challenge. When we talk about purposeful prayer and effective planning, we are talking about two essential legs upon which um, success stands. Planning alone will result in building without the Lord. While praying alone will mean leaving everything to God while we go to sleep. It is a subtle way of dodging our responsibility. Prayer, on the other hand, is a great privilege that God has given to us. He wants us to pray because he wants to answer our prayers. Look at the book of Psalm in Psalm 37. Psalm 37 God has assured us that he will hear us when we pray. I'm reading verses 4 and 5. Psalm 37, I read from verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Of course, you, don't, you, have, you cannot be rebellious to God. You cannot be living in sin and in disobedience to God and expect to, be, to delight that God will delight in your life. It doesn't work that way. It is a life that is living righteously. A life that has turned away from sin and has faced the Lord and is following after the Lord that God will delight in. So, the first thing, get related to God. Be sure, like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you are a child in the kingdom of God and that you have a relationship with a father in heaven. And then God will delight in you. And when you go to the presence of the Lord to pray, the Lord will answer you. Look at verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring it to pass. God will do it. Whatever the challenge is, whatever the situation is, commit your ways unto the Lord. The Lord will do it. Remember, you are taking this decision. Right at the beginning of your stay. You're taking this decision before the challenges come. You're taking this decision before you begin to uh, face uh, difficulties. And by the time you commit everything to God, step by step, the Lord will lead you through. Not only prayer, we also need to have an effective plan of action to overcome the challenge or to execute the program of our life. This cannot be overemphasized because if we fail to plan, then we must reap the consequences of failure, which are confusion and frustration. If, on the other hand, we plan with God and in line with the scriptures, the outcome will be good success. 
Look at the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. When you plan in line with the scriptures, when you plan in line with the word of God, the outcome will be good success, peace, and joy. And so we come to number six. We're looking at number six. Progressive comprehension of members. Progressive comprehension of members. One of the challenges we faced was the initial misunderstanding of the brethren who thought that since one of the objectives of starting the Deeper Life High School was for evangelism, then we should make the school fees to be next to nothing. And incidentally, these same set of people, they have their own children, I mean this brethren, who wonder why we should pay school fees. They pay much more higher fees in other private schools for their own children. But they felt that this is our church. We build the school together. Therefore, we should not really charge anything. But if we're going to maintain a standard and we're going to achieve the goal, it will cost some money. But thanks be to God. With prayers and patience, they soon gain understanding. And thank God for where we are today. Number seven, proof of divine favor and help. Proof of divine favor and help. In Daniel chapter one, I'm going to look at verses 16 through to verse 20. Daniel chapter one, verse 16. Thus, Meza took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pause. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Listen to me. That's what God did for them. That's what God is still doing. This God has not changed. And there are people that feel that, well, oh, how can God help me in my academics? If you have faith in God, and you work hard like these children did, and you remember what we said before in number five, prayer and planning, and you're working hard, you will see the hand of God in your life. You will experience good success. Now, verse 17. As for these four children, God, God, not any other one, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And then they had understanding in all visions and dreams. Verse 18, now at the end of the days that the king has said he should bring them in, then prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all the matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them, how many times? Ten times better than all the magicians and the astrologers that were in all his realm. 
God has not changed. He's still doing it. He'll do it in your life. He'll do it in your school. He'll do it even in your family, even as a staff. God will do wonders. Without any doubt, God was faithful to Daniel and his three friends. By his enabling power and favor, they were able to keep their relationship with God while they succeeded brilliantly. You can see this play out in other youths with purpose, purposeful mind like Joseph, Ruth, David, nobody ever, and so and others. Nobody ever walked with God and fell out. Nobody ever purposed to remain faithful to God and get disappointed. God is a faithful God. Today, looking, looking at what our God has transformed the vision, the vision that he gave to our Father in the Lord. See what God has transformed that vision to. And we can see what it was at the beginning and where we are today. We can then say, lifting up our Ebenezer to God, for he has surely made us ten times better now than we were ten years ago. To God alone be the glory. To the present staff and students, our members and leaders and parents, I can only say this. This is just the beginning. The journey is still far. And I strongly believe that as we stay to the principles of the scriptures and counting on our unfailing God, if the Lord tarries, greater testimonies a waste deeper life high school in this country and beyond in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to appreciate you. We want to thank you greatly for what you have done for us and for the, for the church and for the life high school. We well, thank you, Lord, for the great success and the many testimonies we have heard and we are still going to be hearing concerning your move in Deeper Life High School, the successes you are giving to your children. And Lord God in heaven, we know this is just the beginning. Where you are taking us to is still far, far higher. I pray that this school will continue to walk in line with you and follow your directives and your teachings so that where you want it to be and the position you want it to be in this nation, Lord, they will get there in Jesus' name. And Lord, I'm praying that everything you had in mind at the time you directed our Father in the Lord to start this school, Lord, none of it will be held back in Jesus' name. But you are God of much more. And so we believe that even much more than that, you will do for us in Jesus' name. For the parents, continue to supply their needs so that they will be able to continue to pay promptly the school fees of these children. And for the children, I pray all that they are learning academically and spiritually, Lord, will be assimilated by them. And they will live by it every day of their lives. And when they leave this school, Lord, they will not forget. They will stand faithful to you wherever they find themselves. And very soon, we'll be hearing of the great move through them in various industries and establishments of government and everywhere all over this nation in Jesus' name. Confirm your blessings upon them. Lord, for our staff members, we pray their labor will not be in vain. And as they labor over these children, I pray you will labor over their children also too. And great blessings will come upon every one of us. Once again, we thank you for the privilege you give to us to be part 
of this great institution. And we return all the glory to you for whatever little thing has been done to see to a success. You alone take the glory. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.